The purpose of the Maya was to come onto the planet to establish a paradigm for the future. Different civilizations hold open portals of energy through collective consciousness. Energies that support or sustain other types of realities can, in limited number, be pulled onto the planet. However, a civilization must be prepared and trained to anchor this pillar of light. When there is light, there is information. The Mayan calendar precisely indicates the cycles of the heavens and the hells. The Maya knew their day of departure, and they prepared for that closure. From their point of view, they were transported into another physical dimension. In actuality, the Maya still very much exist. They flourish. Your keys of consciousness are moving through the time locks that the Maya are lifting for you. Because they are the keepers of time, the Maya are opening many time locks all over the planet. All time is simultaneous. A planet has layers of energy grids around it that allow it to be experienced from its various time frames. In order to enter a planetary body, you must discover the portals or opening that take you into the realities of the planet where sentient life exists. You can land on a world, and it can look completely empty to you if you don't go through a portal. By going through a portal, you access all the different realities and time frames and corridors that run off this portal. So someone can come back to an Earth that existed 200 or 500 years ago. These realities exist. Layer upon layer of gridworks surround worlds. As these gridworks are shifted and moved, they create different realities and different energies. When you move or shift the grids and pass through a portal, you are able to enter worlds of past, present, and future simultaneously. There are many portals on Earth. There is one in the Mexico Central America area. There is one in the Sinai, and there is one over Tibet. These are three major portals through which energies come and depart the planet. Ancient crystal skulls. Are often discovered or kept in portal areas. When people maintain guardianship and ownership of a portal, they also have the ability to access the corridors of time. Those in Tibet could look into the future and see that they were to be invaded, so they made preparations for the times that were coming. They could see what their very seeds, the sperm of the Tibetan monks, would be used for. They could also see why their artifacts had to be hidden. And that they would have to go into exile. Timelines, the fabric of time, and the tubes that run on this fabric of time are all hooked into primary events. Without a primary event, you cannot hook into a timeline. In other words, the secondary and tertiary webs need to be hooked into a primary event so that other timelines can use it as an anchor. The splitting of the atom was a primary event. So was the splitting of the second. Harmonic convergence was a primary event. Primary events can be public or private events, and are events through which the course of history is affected drastically. So, in order to anchor a new timeline onto the planet, there has to be a mass event taking place. A primary event is an occurrence that is registered within the prime webwork in the corridors of time as a pivotal juncture around which all of reality transits. It can be considered an event that is a turning point for the domain in which it transpires. Harmonic convergence was an orchestrated event impulsed from the future. It was sent from the future into the past, and then reorganized into the present to create a hole through which the secondary and tertiary nets could be built and find a link onto the planet. What was the link? If these webs needed a primary event to link onto, what was it in the primary event that gave them the hold? It was the consciousness of the people. The libraries. Are on a version of the primary web that is closed down and inactivated. The libraries are guarded. 
It is not easy to get into a library these days, especially from the future. So the underlying time corridors are being constructed. Many, in order to own certain territories or to have greater influence over them, route specific timelines together. They have as many timelines link into each other as possible, or they avoid as many as they can, depending upon what the purpose is. When the secondary and tertiary events are established and built, it means that there will be a major opening in the corridor of time. This opening will allow many to come through the so-called officially approved channels. They will find an underground movement and doorways that simultaneously open in many other directions. The Maya, those master tricksters of time, have left you a number of clues with which to play this game. The Mayan calendar is well worth considering, as it marks a time of ending and a closure at the winter solstice in December 2012. When that last stretch of time is completed, there will be a dimensional shift upon this planet. Those who are able to accommodate the dimensional shift now are already moving in and out of the fourth and even the fifth dimension. During the next 20 years, the new frequency will become so predominant on the planet that it will catapult one version of your world into a new cycle and another version into a complete ending and destruction. Eventually, you will perceive a very different set of memories because you will change the past of your universe. This is how things are. We have told you that you come from your future and that we came back to change the past. We are very clever. We are changing the history of the entire universe by making a parallel universe. This is what parallel universes are. Plans that shift the mechanisms of time from one point by changing the memory and changing the event. You can do the same thing in your own personal life. You can change your past as well. Be flexible as you learn to play the game.